Hi everyone, so it's here, one of the most long awaited and most requested mid journey features of all time. In painting has finally arrived. Today, we're gonna to take a deep dive into how to use it to see exactly how powerful it is. We're gonna go over some of the limitations as well and some secrets that I've uncovered that I haven't seen anybody else covering, but most importantly, how much fun you can have with it. Okay, let's dive in. First off, if you're unfamiliar with in painting, it refers to the technique of restoring damaged or deteriorated parts of images or video. The concept has its roots in the restoration of artwork, but today we're talking about its use in mid-journey. So really what this is about is highlighting an area and being able to re-prompt within that area. So yes, that means that the multiple fingered people are a part of the past. Um, not to say that we won't generate them, it's just a lot easier to get rid of those extra fingers and limbs as we can see via this image by proper prompter. For the record, I'm just happy that this was not a panoramic picture of a man named Peter riding a porpoise by proper prompter. Nailed it. <laughs> it was like the fourth take. That was actually pretty good. So the very region is the button that we use for in painting in mid journey. The very strong and the very subtle are buttons that we went over in the panning video that I did. I'm guessing that very region or in painting is pretty much going to be your go to from here on out. That said, don't count very strong and very subtle out because there are still uses when you're looking at changing the overall aspect of your image. So with very region, which I'm really just gonna call in painting from here on out, you have the ability to select certain areas of your canvas and have Mid Journey reimagine it. Without any additional user input, Mid Journey will decide what to put there based on contextual clues in the image surrounding the area. If you want to prompt for specific things, you're going to want to make sure that you have remix mode turned on. To access it, go to your forward slash settings and make sure that remix mode is turned on. So to show you how that works, this is a very simple prompt. I guess that ends up being Steve Aoki's dad sitting on a couch next to a lion, you know, as you do. To get started, all we have to do is hit this very region button. And within a few moments, Mid Journey has reimagined the scene in just that area. In this case, uh, generating up, I guess, Steve Aoki's dad's third wife, uh, giving him seductive looks as he naps it out. And I'm not judging the man, he may have had a very long day. As an additional note, in painting only works with upscaled images. So via Mid Journey documentation, here is a look at the in painting module. Um, as you can see in this corner, we have an undo last step. We'll go over that in one minute. Free draw the rectangle tool in which you select your areas with. The free draw tool is a little finicky. We're gonna go over that as well in a minute. Um, the in painting prompt when you have the remix mode turned on, cancel, return to discord, and then you can resize or move the window up in this corner. Although it is locked to the discord window, so you won't really be able to move it around if you say in full screen mode, it kind of is what it is. As a note, everything that you see on the screen is available as a PDF over on Gumroad. It is totally free, but donations are of course always appreciated. Also, if you're a member of the Patreon, you've already got this PDF waiting for you. As a quick FYI, Mid Journey does advise that in painting works best when you cover a region of 20 to 50% of your image. Uh, although I've gotten much, much smaller than that and had very good results. So uh, there might be a CYA kind of situation there. In painting works really well when you combine it with zooming out. Although oddly, you cannot in paint after panning. I'm not sure why that might just be a temporary glitch uh, that gets fixed later on. But as it currently stands, if you pan, you then are locked out of in painting. So let's take a look at a use case here. This is the back rooms, uh, which if you're not familiar with is kind of a surreal existential horror collaborative fiction experiment or thing uh, let loose on the internet. That's a big influence on the TV show Severance, which is amazing. So anyhow, it's the back room styled by Gregory Crudson with a weight of two styled by Brendan Wolfel. Uh, with an aspect ratio of 16.9. Uh, Wolfel and Crudson are both photographers. That's something that I've been experimenting around a lot with, taking two photographers, weighting one, and then mashing them together. You get some really interesting results that way, kind of a hybrid of the two styles. So obviously because I didn't give any character details, we ended up with the very typical mid-journey character with back to us. But now with in-painting, we can change that. So by moving into our in-painting module and just grabbing the rectangle tool, I can just highlight her and then changing the prompt to a woman in a white shirt and a black skirt, 
comma, sad eyes. By using sad eyes, we've indicated to Midjourney that we want to see her face. Running that gives us a pretty much the exact same background as promised as this is in painting with our subject now turned to us with her sad eyes. Um, I'm very impressed with the way that it handles lighting. Although it's not completely accurate here in terms of motivated light, um, you know, we've got our light source here. It's kind of creating a halo shape here, but there's definitely another key light coming in from the front of her shooting down. I mean, this is how, you know, a set would be lit as well. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be completely motivated by that light in the background, but she does match in terms of the overall lighting and composition within this frame. So just to give us a little more room to play with, I took that image and zoomed it out 1.5 times uh, to give us this image. And now because our subject here looks like the victim in a horror movie, I decided to flip the script via in painting. So I wanted to keep the subject mostly the same, except have her holding a red balloon, because well, let's face it, if you stumbled across this girl holding a red balloon in this room, um, you know, she's gone from victim to probably the daughter of Jigsaw. Uh, so in order to accomplish that, um, we just take our rectangle tool and highlight this area, leaving both her head and her other arm outside of the bounding box. Although here we want our balloon floating up. So at that point we can move over to the lasso tool and paint upwards here. Now the lasso tool is a little bit weird because it basically, here I'll show you. Let's finish this off here. Just give a little bit of extra stuff there. There we go. So um, yeah, you can see it's really finicky. Um, so it kind of works as a circle and then you can counterclockwise it out. Um, yeah, like I said, it's gonna take some getting used to. It's a pretty weird tool. It definitely does not work the way that the Photoshop lasso tool, nor does it work how the pen tool works in Photoshop. Um, once we have like this, you can just undo it by coming up here and zapping it out. So um, you may have a little bit of difficulty at first playing with this, but remember that undo button is your friend. So after executing that prompt, we now have this image, which I think works pretty well. I would have preferred to have her uh, holding the balloon a little more down the rope. Um, the balloon also looks a little over-exaggeratedly big, but for the most part, this is what I was mostly looking for. There was also this image, which I thought was pretty good. The heart balloon was kind of a nice touch, making it a little extra creepy. But I do want to point out that there were some mistakes as well. Like, this one's okay. But in this image, we have the return of the double limbs. So that's something you're gonna have to keep an eye out for when you're in painting. So I will point out that earlier in my experimentations, when I put the bounding box completely around her body, we would end up in some weird poses, uh, like this one where she's sort of like a balloon, <laughs> or in this one where she's kind of awkwardly holding it like a balloon for you. But I do have to say, I think when you compare our initial image to our final image, it really showcases exactly how powerful in painting is, particularly when you combine it with zooming. In this, we've managed to completely recontextualize our subject while keeping the background location pretty much the same. In painting does work with Niji as well. This was cinematic action scene from a James Bond film, aspect ratio 16.9. Uh, we got our Bond-ish character here, kind of doing the Leo walk away from an explosion. So in painting that and just kind of giving it a bounding box here and writing in ninjas, because you know, if you want to make something cooler, add ninjas, which gives us this, which truthfully, maybe I should have just used a longer prompt, but it does go to show that it does work. Um, with a longer prompt, maybe I wouldn't have ended up with this kind of emoji ninja over here. Um, I would say actually out of the four of them, probably the fourth one probably looks the most in tune with what I'm looking for, although it also kind of just looks like Emily the Strange as a ninja. I don't know, I'll take it. But it does go to show that in painting is a pretty powerful tool. Uh, through it, we can change ethnicities, we can change emotions, and we can add props. Let's take a look at those real quick. Longtime viewers of the channel will recognize our old friend, the man in the blue business suit walking down the street. Um, so issuing a in paint on him by utilizing the lasso tool and just covering his face and issuing the prompt Korean man, we have now changed our man in the blue business suit to a Korean man in a blue business suit. 
it's really impressive when you actually a b them um so just by hopping back and forth between the two you can see what a good job um in painting really does and so this is portrait photograph of joan of arc styled by annie Leibowitz, the famous portrait photographer large format camera 35 millimeter lens studio lighting neutral background um yeah solid joan of arc moving into the in painting module uh, selecting just this area of her face and putting in happy and running that gets us this image which you know isn't the brightest of smiles but then again she's joan of arc you know things things didn't turn out so well for her overall i think it looks pretty good um definitely at least on par or probably better than Photoshop's liquify feature where it makes people smile as well. That one's always kind of looked a little off to me. And finally, returning to Niji, uh, we had this image, which was cinematic still, Mad Max raising a pistol, an aspect ratio of 16.9. Um, just highlighting this area and changing that to holding a katana uh, gave us this in-painted image, which um he is now holding a katana now there are going to be some times when in painting is just going to flat out ignore you but there are some tricks to get it to do what you want uh for example returning to a character that we've used here many times in the past are cyberpunk woman with white hair walking in the snow i wanted to put a white wolf next to her but no matter what i did the wolf would not appear here's another example where i tried still no wolf zooming out on the image to give us more space for a wolf uh still no wolf but ultimately the solution comes via the slider method now i'm pretty sure i covered the slider method in a previous video where i went over waiting uh, but basically the way that it works is that you want to issue a colon colon and then repeat part of your phrase now traditionally you would add a wait in to the end of your prompt but there is no waiting in image prompting so the way that it works here is by taking the same prompt and adding in white wolf walking next to her colon colon wolf city alley cold snowing it basically ends up splitting the prompt now by no means am i saying it's perfect and that ended up being a lucky roll after a number of these weird hybrid um our cyberpunk woman turns into kind of a wolf hybrid um then there was this one where it kind of looks like she's sort of riding the wolf then there was this one which was accurate it just wasn't composed very well so i'm just saying it'll probably take you a number of rolls to get to what you're looking for but ultimately it does work and although there's some weird kind of smudging that happens in the background details um, what you could probably do is just stack the original image with the wolf image into an image editor and then kind of erase the smudgier parts or blend them together so although we can't use image prompting or waiting within in painting there are commands that we can issue uh, via mid journey documentation the following commands are available uh, chaos fast image waiting no stylize relax style version video and weird now that's not actually entirely accurate Again, image waiting doesn't work because image prompting doesn't work. So it does lead me to suspect that perhaps that will be coming in a future update. And that would be super cool. Additionally, I can tell you that I have tried version and that does not work as well. The commands that I have tested that do work are chaos, stylize, style, and weird. As always, be careful with weird because weird does get weird. For example, here is cinematic still, wide angle, Filmed by Quentin Tarantino, a man sitting in a Los Angeles diner, drinking coffee, black suit, 1960s aesthetic, an aspect ratio of 2-1. In painting to the right side of him and adding in a clown with a chaos of 100 gives us this. Uh, and then to the left of him, I added in an alien with a weird of 50. Uh, one thing that I'd like to point out though at how good in painting is, if you look at the version without the alien, um, you can see that the reflection of the palm tree is actually in the table and then when the alien appears not only has he ordered danishes by the way uh but the palm tree has vanished and so has the reflection in the table the post reflection remains in both though so yeah that's pretty remarkable so let me know what you guys think about the new in painting feature and if there's any tips or tricks that you've picked up along the way i thank you for watching my name is tim